All the veterans aboard a recent Rocky Mountain Honor flight to Washington had war stories. Many were reticent to share, and that's okay. Their life stories are also worth hearing while we still have the opportunity. Mac McClure, who lives in Lakewood, left his sweetheart behind when he enlisted for World War II. Thank you! Thank you for your service, Mac McClure. Welcome to D.C. <laughs> Mac McClure yeah. is a man pulled at by invisible forces. Isn't that great? All them signs, all these people out here, I can't believe them. He's felt drawn to this place to make this honor flight journey for years. Really a great trip. This memorial is for you. Thank you. That same pull toward duty, responsibility. This is just gorgeous. It led Mac to enlist as a young man from the Midwest, and it sent him hurtling into the worst of war. I went over Normandy Beachhead on D-Day, but as far as the fighting and all that kind of stuff, I just put all that behind me. I can't, uh, I can't dwell on that stuff. But grand sights and good company remind Mac <laughs> that not every day spent far from home oh, is a bad one. This is really outstanding, a great. But every day spent far from home means feeling an invisible force pulling you back. Oh, getting to come home. I was over there for four years. The lucky guys over there had a girl waiting at home. The luckiest among them today it, still do. It's just uh, I wish my wife could be here and she could see all this because she would really enjoy it. Of all the invisible forces that tug at Mac McClure, only one in his whole life has been irresistible. Betty. My wife is in a nursing home, but she's doing real good. Okay, guys, here we go. It's a B. B for Betty's. Okay. Betty All right. is a force indeed. I bet he's having fun. Oh, I'm sure he is. Betty's always been comfortable flying solo without the gunner she fell in love with before the war. Now, I have my interests, and he has his interests. And we allow each other to do those things. <laughs> you enjoy your day. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And I think it's why we've been together for so long. He made her promise she'd see other people while he was in the service. I didn't mind it. It let me do my thing. <laughs> Don't misunderstand. Shoot a couple more with mine, would you please? She wishes that Mac was here. Yeah, I miss him. Uh, let's see here. But no time apart can compare to their first. This is him. Four years gone. Well, I hate being apart, but my life was changing too. She graduated school, took nursing classes. Max letters home grew less frequent, then stopped. The period that we didn't hear from him for months, I got, I was really worried, really worried. Her faith always told her Mac was coming home, and he did. But they were different people after four years, and they decided they shouldn't get married after all. We just didn't know each other. They were married two weeks later. Well, we just fell in love all over again. Mac and Betty have always had that irresistible kind of love. Married 72 years and counting. We've had a good life. Their bond stretched clear to Europe without breaking. It's been tested since. Hi guys, I'm Mac. There were the years when Mac worked two jobs, long stretches on the road, but Mac always hurried home. And he usually just says, hi, babe. <laughs> then just recently, Betty had her fall and landed in a nursing home. We're not happy with the fact that we're not together all the time. The fact that I am here. And I will be here the rest of my life. But this is Betty, who sees adventure in adversity. You know, it takes more energy to be sad and mad then it does the smile and thank the Lord for what you have. She's in good hands. I'll give her a call after a while. And this is Mac, who always comes home. Yes, he comes every day, except the, when you have a lot of snow. <laughs> hey, let me see if I can call her. Now, let me get Betty. There she is. Yes. Now, let's see if she's on here. Mac is coming home. There he is. Hello. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. Are you having a good time? Oh, yeah, I'm having a ball. I'll tell you, you just, there's no way to explain what this is. Oh, good. Well, you can tell me all about it when you get back. Tell everybody I said hello. Okay. Now I'm looking forward to you getting back. 
Okay, sweetie. Bye bye. Bye bye. I love you. Love you. Two days later, Betty and Mac are together again. And I bet you look younger than any of them. I was the best looking one there. Yeah, I know you're the best. <laughs> when Mac came back to Betty after the war, he didn't want to talk about what he'd seen. Oh, I tell you, we, the flight was good. Oh, we just had a ball. What a difference a lifetime makes and a chance to be among brothers during peacetime. But I didn't have any trouble sleeping, I'll tell you. Woo! Mac might never stop talking. Was your flight good? Huh? Was your flight good? Boy, the ones going over were pretty rough. Mac and Betty's long and life then, together has not been without trouble and loss. Betty's health now means that they live apart, but remain inseparable. I mean, we were busy, because you don't stop from the time you get up until you go to bed. You just don't stop. Their love is a reminder of what every veteran aboard the honor flight will tell you, that they were fortunate to have come home from war so they could live a lifetime of highs and lows. I could go back and go on that again. I really could. Well, I'm so glad you had such a good time. A lifetime capped off with a soaring high. Okay, huh? Just still. I'll Hello. see you later. And a second homecoming. See you later, sweetie. Okay. That's twice one. as sweet. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.